that when I look at Caduceus Argus, I admit as reality and truth beyond be like Eve, and the and the level of um, true faith which leads to true knowledge that the one they call Ophiuchus. This is the Eurocentric um, rendition. This is according to the the European tradition. Even the name goes back to either the European, the Greek, the Roman, and even the Arab so, so-called traditions of Ophiuchus, who is also known as the serpent bearer. And this is, this is a good collage right here of a couple of different um, traditions of Ophiuchus. And this is another continuation of Caduceus uh, Argus, the Caduceus Argus teaching. So here's Ophiuchus from a couple of different traditions. You can see the, the Asian over here or the Chinese. But, but well, it's not only Chinese, actually. You see, people think this is Chinese. This is what I'm talking about. Who are the real Mohammedans? But see, you, you, you look at this guy here and you say he looked Chinese, right? But then let's look at the face. Okay, he looked Chinese, but this is Arabic. I know it's written on the side, but it's Arabic. But he looks Chinese. So when you look at the Muslims today, you know, and then you look at the, the, the art, the so-called Islamic art, you see a lot of Chinese, a lot of like Asian but I'll say Chinese, because they do look they do look Chinese, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> or you know more Chinese than so-called Japanese in that sense. Although there might be some relation. Now here's the Eurocentric Ophiuchus. This is Ophiu, the so-called thirteenth, the thirteenth sign, and here is another another rendition of it. I think probably European, because you can look at his hair right there and see he's a blonde guy right here, you know, showing you his buttocks. That's also another thing right there. You know, Sheth, when it says destroy all the children of Sheth, Sheth also in the Hebrew could relate to the so-called buttocks. And I say that because this this guy right here showing his back while the the Arab the Arab so called Asian, Asiatic Arab, now here's the European, the Greco European right there, Ophiuchus or Serpent bearer, some say serpent charmer, and then we have down here. Let's move this over here. Then we have down here in the galactic mysteries of Mithraism. According to remember what we was talking about, how it all comes out of Ethiopia from Egyptian yoga. We showed how it all come out of um, the ancient knowledge or Maat, truth, justice, and righteousness come out of Ethiopia, then to Egypt. And then from Egypt, it spread in seven branches to the east, and in two or three or more branches to the north. And then it also goes to West Africa with like Yoruba and some of the uh, Chineke, you know, some of the, the African traditions. And we call say the Dogon, the Dogon people also make a link with Egypt and a lot of different Africans today have been um, studying ancient. Um, Metu Inter or Metu Medu Neder or Neter or Inter, the ancient Egyptian language, and they've been finding connections between African languages, many different African languages, and root words, concepts, and ideas that are known to be Egyptian. So this is what they say is is is, is supposed to be coming up for December twenty first, twenty twelve. Now, as we mentioned. December 22nd, 2011 is going to be the same sort of um, 6.5, 6.9 degree alignment as is supposed to happen on December 21st. This is what we're talking about that. Is it really 2012? Is 2012 a day or hour? Or is it the opening of a time? Is it the end of a time? Is it the beginning of a time? Or has it already begun already? Now, what we're saying here, and we're going to bring up this, uh, um, before we bring that up, let's just bring this one up again so you can see Ophiuchus. Let's see of Ophiuchus. This is Ophiuchus again. Now, in the further lecture, later on, y'all willing, we'll get into the star patterns to study the which are the bright stars, which are the less bright stars, 
as well as more on the dark riff, um, looking at what it really looks like more scientifically. Let's get a, a scientia, scientia knowledge. This is the Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer, um, and here is Sagittarius right around here, and between Sagittarius, roughly between Sagittarius and um, Scorpio. But then if you look at certain maps of the heavens, you see that right behind um, the Ophiuchus is Taurus. Taurus is behind Ophiuchus as well, which is kind of very interesting. Now, I want you just to take a good look at how they envision these star patterns. The little circles you see right here are the actual star pad, are the actual stars in the heavens. But let's, let's zoom in a little bit. But if, if, if you look right here, you can see how they envision a, a man who looks like a white man, so forth and so on, in their own image. And they envision this is his hands, his arms, this is, this is the serpent, even though serpents is up here. Serpents, the serpents constellation is really over in this section where the head of the dragon. They also call it, I think, what is it, Ras? Al Hage, Hage, Hague, Hague, Hage, um, which means head of the serpent, um, charmer or holder, according to some interpretation. Now, here's the feet. You can see the feet right here is on Scorpio. The feet of Ophiuchus is on Scorpio. Now, in some visions, they actually have Ophiuchus with one leg, this leg higher up than this leg. But this is uh, this one example of the many envisioning of what that constellation pattern really is making out, right? So when we look at ancient Egypt, we'll see, like in Dendera, we'll see another sort of pattern there as well. But let's just look at this one for a moment. I think this one tells, tells the story. This is now Ophiuchus pictured from the back. Now, we know that his imperial majesty, Kedemawi Hazel Selassie, our godfather and king of kings, in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach, that he has reminded us that St. George is the patron saint of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia and, the, and the Ethiopian armies, as well as her allies, speaking of the uh, United Kingdom or the British. Now, the connection is the black nobility, which is the backstory the real backstory or the black story on the um, British nobility, the real British nobility. And you don't have to be naive me, but you can find the truth for yourself when you check J.A. Rogers' works. Much of J.A. Rogers' works, like Nature Knows No Color Line and other books, also points that connection. Some of the black Hebrew Israelites also make that connection with King Arthur, and the, and the Moors also make that further connection. Shakespeare also makes that connection, and um, Joy, uh, uh, Gerald Macy and his works um, also make that connection. Um, and the interesting thing is that when you go into Shakespeare's writings, a lot of Shakespeare's writings, there's a very prominent black presence. But because most people don't know English, that was one of the things that, that Slick Willie Lynch wanted to deny the, the enslaved Ethiopian Hebrews the black Hebrews and the Israelites over here in the Western Hemisphere. But concerning our kinsman and redeemer, Kedemawi Hala Selassie, he tells us, and you see this area right here? This area right here on the crown, right? This area right here. This is, this is Georgis. Georgis under the crown of King David and King Solomon. And this is George is pictured there. And also on the the crown of the king of kings, um, Georgis or George, is also um, pictured there. Let's see if we have that picture of the crown. This crown, um, this crown. Let's see if we can get to this crown. Just bring that up right here so you can. It's not a very clear picture. I want to say clear, like a large picture, high resolution, but we'll see what we can do. Sometimes it actually shows up better. You know, and I think y'all can see it probably much better um, looking at the video. You can see George is right here. This is the crown of his imperial majesty. 
and you can see George much better. We're looking at it from this view, pixelated, but you probably can see the outline of of Georgis here in the center of the crown of the King of Kings. So this is the imperial crown, and um, I have a testimony about a vision of this crown. This is one of the visions, one of the sweet visions in my in my um, childhood in Rastafari. But now. This is the crown of his majesty. So Georgis is, is featured on the crown and also in this position on his majesty's um, hat and headgear. And so we've asked ourselves, why is Caduce Georgis? Why is George, in other words, you know, why is he so important, the patron saint? Who was he? Well, we know he was a Christian martyr, but what did he do? And what about this slaying of the dragon? Who is the dragon? I think one of the most um, informative aspects is to read His Imperial Majesty's um, the New Day speech or the Independence Day speech of Kadamawi Haile Selassie from May 5th, 1941, when His Imperial Majesty returned victoriously with the aid and assistance of uh, the Allies to his throne to the throne of David, the throne of Yahweh, of Jehovah, five years to the very day that he left, and that was May 5th. Now, Cinco de Mayo and there's other May 5th um, resonances. May 5th is very significant, both in the heavens as well as on earth. There was a syzygy May 5th, roughly around the year 2000. There was a significant syzygy where many people believed there would be uh, catastrophic events possible because of the magnetics and the science of it. But remember, there's an intelligence. Divine intelligence rules the heavens, and the heavens of heavens are his. Yet the earth he has given to the children of men. Now, when we look at this, I call this, this one my favorite, um, um, Dennis, Topiawi Dennis uh, sketch. It's like a sketch right here. You can see some of the of this illumination, Ethiopian illumination of St. George right here. This is interesting when you study different illuminations, even the Ethiopian, Ethiopic church illuminations of St. George. You would notice that um, the, there's some details that some have that some don't have. And some of the details are significant, significant because some of the details actually point to that which is heavenly. So it makes one ask a question, and some of the things are not really strictly people. Some have criticized Ethiopian art. Some racist and envious and jealous um, Europeans have criticized Ethiopian art somehow as though because it differed from their so-called conceptions of art, while there was others that have actually recognized the significance the, 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 that is because when you look at a lot of the illuminated manuscripts there in all these foreign um, universities, archives, museums, and being studied by some of the highest um, scientists and and other intellectuals trying to figure out the, the secrets. Even some of them might be watching these videos as well to try to figure out that which they didn't figure out. But this might be one thing they didn't figure out right here. And we wanted to make this known to you all, my brothers and sisters. First of all, let's just study uh, Kedus Georgis right here. And some of the other pictures and the, the illuminations of St. George, let's see if we can show you um, a, a contrasting example. We'll get back to, to Ophiuchus in a moment and, and let you know why we thought it was significant to um, say what we have said. Now, here is a classic um, Ethiopian um, modern illumination of St. George right here. Now, if you see this right here, you would notice that it's similar, very much is, is similar. Now, also make a note of this woman here who's tied to like a tree. You notice she's tied to a tree. And uh, this is a tree. She's tied to a tree right here. You can see her right here in the tree. Right, and she's a part of the story too, as well. But I want you to look at the positioning of the art. Now, if you look in some of the European um, traditions, according to some of the European tradition, I think we have a wiki 
a wiki page right here of St. George. Um, this has a woman here, this particular one right here. And let's see if we can zoom it in a little bit um, of St. George from some of the, the European and Roman Catholic traditions of St. George. This one doesn't have, and there's no woman right there. This one, maybe that's a woman right there, but there's no woman right there. But notice the Ethiopian Hebrew complexion, because we know the Jews were black, says the Roman historian. Um, here in the, late, the later legends also, now we have the later George legends, George and the dragon, but a lot of that is mixed with a lot of uh, folklore, European folklore, and a twisting of some of the older, the older um, mythos. Here you also see the the black um, the blackness of um, this is from Bulgarian. Here's a little Afro right there, as well. So as you get to some of the older versions, it was known that he was a Hebrew of Lydia of the tribe of Benjamin. This is Saint George's the the red the red cross is Saint George. So you have the Red Cross, you can make that link right here, the martyrdom of St. George. Um, also, this is Prague right here, outside the United Nations. It's a very interesting um, one of St. George. And we look for some pictures on that. So if anybody got any pictures on the St. George image outside of the statue, outside the, the United Nations, please uh, share it with us. Um, after 9-11, they made it a little difficult to go in that garden there and to take any pictures of it. But we know that the significance of that George at the UN is because of this man right here, because of Katamawi Haile Selassie. So we have this link with Caduceus Georgis, and significant because in the 1941 Independence Day speech, His Imperial Majesty would say some significant words concerning this dragon, this dragon. And that, now the most obvious link with the dragon was the, the, the Gentile white supremacy, the racist and, and even possessed uh, um, system of white supremacy and what was going on in the world by the Gentile dominion of that time, which biblically, scripturally behind it is devil or Satan inspired, that, that old dragon. But then when we put this old dragon now in its proper celestial or cosmic sense, here's where we now make the link with um, Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus. Now, this is another very interesting one from Bob Marley's Confrontation album that we just want to show you right here again. Now, what's, what's interesting is that if you look at this one over here, you notice the halos around his head, right, which is the position of the sun to the character right there. The sun is behind his head, right, with the halo. But now here, if you look at this one, it's in the halo, which seems to link with some sort of other alignment. Notice the square corner, similar to Dendera. As, as the four squares in Dendera. But it's also from a reverse angle. Notice a, it's a reverse angle. That means something significant would have had to happen in the heavens, such as the stars falling from the heavens and the heavenly bodies being moved out of their usual position. Now, the events that are said to this phase that we're in right now, we're, we're coming up to this um, 13,000, some say 26,000 year period of time where this sort of a, an alignment is to be expected. But now the real effects both on us individually and collectively are dependent on our own perception, spiritual and otherwise perception and consciousness, you understand, and our, our relation with spirit with the psychological world as well as our physical relation in the world with with one another and with our own spirits and bodies, the, the tripartiteness, the trinity in man, the spirit, the soul, and the body must come to alignment. That's the importance of Yeshua HaMoshiach or Jesus Christ. This is why the gospel, the good news of his majesty is strictly focused on 
the way, the truth, and the life, living it as, a, as a, of Christ as an example for us, for us to live. And he has shown that example for the true spiritual and the true Christian brothers and sisters to, to, to see and to know. Now, once again, back to this picture right here of Caduce Georgis. We want to show how Caduce Georgis is our Ophiuchus. In other words, Ophiuchus, which they expect, which has the 13th sign, because in Ethiopia there are how many months of sunshine? Notice the sun symbol, the halo right here, the sun symbol. The woman in this tree right here, woman in this tree right here, because he, he slays or conquers the dragon and he saves, he saves the maiden or he saves the woman because the dragon was as a sacrifice. I mean, the dragon, the woman was as a sacrifice to the dragon. The woman is like being sacrificed to this dragon or to Satan. Now, this is, this is, this is very important to understand. What is a woman in Scripture symbolic of? What is a woman is symbolic of a church in the Scripture? A woman is symbolic of a, of a church. We can extend that to a nation. We can even say the Beta Israel is likened to a bride. And then we have in Revelation the whole sequence about the, 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 the dragon want to devour the, 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 the child, the bane. Before it's, as soon as it's born, as soon as it's born. And, and this is the key thing that we forget too. The same thing has happened with us and our children. You understand? And a whole generation. That's what they talk about, crack baby. You understand? The whole generation was sacrificed to this dragon. There was not that Georgis, you understand? Or the consciousness of what Georgis was. Because who Georgis was and what he did is the significance of his his kedisana and of his of his sainthood. So now look at the position. What we notice is different is this zang here, as we talked on this zang before. This um this uh spear, you could say the tor or the spear, and the relative position of the spear. Let's see if we can bring up the other um the other one with Ankh Ankh uh, Wahibere. If we get Ankh Ankh Wahibere, let's bring up a new one, Ankh Wahibere, so you can see what we um, what we mean. If you didn't catch the last one, and see right here, so Ankh Wahibere, let's bring it up. Here it comes. This is this is both December twenty second, twenty eleven, and December. Uh, 21st, 2012, this very same alignment. See the Zang aligned with the, 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 the central sun, the Milky Way, the galaxy, which they say behind this is the dark rift. They say behind this is a dark rift. Now here's Ankwa Hibere slaying the Apophis who is sitting on top of the Jed of Osiris, in other words, suppressing the backbone or the spiritual energy so that, that that serpent that creeps on its belly. So when we look into the book of James, it's interesting because there's two types of um, wisdom. There's a wisdom which comes up from, from the ground or earthly wisdom, and then there's heavenly wisdom. And you will find that in the book of James, Let's just go to James for a moment in the book of James in the New Testament, or Jacob, Yaakov. And if you're reading the English, then there's a tendency to get lost in, in, in translation. Some ideas, that's why it's good to read these and study the Bible, like with a good study Bible, especially for English speakers. That's why we recommend the Schofield, um, the Schofield uh, Study Bible because it, at least it aids and assists and explains certain terms and words that might have gotten lost in, um, in translation. It speaks of, in one of these chapters here, let's find this. Okay, here's where it speaks of wisdom in the third chapter of the 
epistle of um of the epistle of James. And I would suggest you study this chapter, James chapter three, where it says, My brethren, be not many masters. Be not many masters, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater uh, condemnation, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. So if a man is not is able not to offend in word, remember in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And that beginning word that is God is Elohim, and that's who we are. You understand? This is why it, the Holy Spirit is sent to the sons and the daughters, and in these last days, we're getting these prophetic manifestations. We're getting this this um, this rise in consciousness, this rise in consciousness uh, among those who are able to receive. The same as a perfect man is able also to bridle the whole body. You see, this is significant when we start to study and link the metaphysics to this particular time because it says that the same one, you understand, the same one who offends not in word is perfect. And perfect is to say that they are, they are complete. They are, they, they are complete according to the qualification of our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, Getachin Jesus Christos, is a perfect man, is a complete man. Not perfect in the false worldly mundane sense, but in the spiritual sense, in the true metaphysical sense. And is able also to do what? To bridle. That's interesting. Able to bridle the whole body. You know, just as Kedus Georgis, we have here... And we have here, where in both pictures, you see the hand, you see the hand, he is bridling the horse. He is bridling the horse. In both pictures, he is bridling the horse. That one is able now to do what? According to James, James 3 and 2, it says, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Let's hear this by Marinya. Hulachin, the Negar. In a sana kalalena, bekala yamai sanakal, a manam binor, a rusu, a sagawin, hulu, dagmo, ligeta yamichel, fits um, so no. It says that a rusu, he himself, a sagawin or shigawin, hulu, his entire flesh, all of his flesh. The flesh, remember, that's the, that's, that's the third part of the trinity in man, the body, the flesh, the lower, the lower side, the, way, the last side. This is why it says that the body, the body is, is the, 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 the redemption of the body is the last aspect of salvation, according to the scripture. He's able to, he's able to tame, in a sense. He's able to restrain, ligeta. Yemichil, he has the ability, fitum, complete soul, complete human being. Nau. And now some go a little bit more into this as we go into James three and three. It says, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. In the whole Farasoch Yitazel Zulinazen. And we're able to guide them, lead them wherever we want to their bodies. So now you see the link here is being made between the horses, how, how a rider is able to um, lead and guide and how the horse obeys that rider is how our spirit and our psychology or our soul being born again in and through Christ is also able now to guide and, and, and cause our body to obey. So we turn about their whole body. But now there's a metaphysical and a, a transfiguration significance to this as well. You understand, as we speak about the dimensions and the third to the fourth and the fourth to the fifth, v verse four says, 
Ineho mar kaboch degmo yihin yahila talak abihonu ba awloa nefasima biyanadu ye marifek ada wodamiya weddo sifra ijiga tana shabahone meka zafia yimaralu yimaralu. It says, Behold, also the ships, the Merkaboch, the Merkaba, Merkaba, Merkaboch, which through which though they be so great, although the ship, the Merkaba, the Merkaboch may be great, and and on the on the celestial level this is so, and are driven of fierce winds, of of fierce winds. This is on on earth, on the on the seas, on earth and the heavenly seas by fierce even solar winds. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor, whithersoever the governor or the leader, the Mary, Talak u Mary, which whithersoever he listeth. Verse five. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a mad a little fire kindleth. You see, it says, the tongue, but Bamrinya and Dihum. And the whom andevet the style of speech andevet degmo tinisha bilta hono betalak negar yimekal noho tinisha sat inde te yala tilik chaka yakat alal. In other words, uh, the tongue. Notice this. This is the tongue. It's like fire. The style of speech. The style of speech is like fire. Now, this, of course, on a more metaphysical level, is talking about the the use of 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 word, sound, and power on the more spiritual. But there's even even if one doesn't understand the science, they are affected or they affect others by it. That's why it says, "And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity." It's a whole alem. The world is, isn't it interesting that the tongue, the way the words are used, the way we speak, the way the system speaks, the way the world speaks, even how they speak of time as we try to touch on briefly here and there before, is a whole world. So when you say about the world, the, the, the world, what is the world? So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. That the tongue is the world and that world is what defiles. Notice what it says that defiles the whole body. And still speaking of the fleshy, the fleshical body, sigan or shigan hulu, yasa defalinna, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it, it is set on fire of what? Hell. And it's set on fire by the Gehanim, by the fires of the Gen of Hinnom, which is, which is a, a, a location that was used as a, as a symbolic of another location that is beyond the present realm of 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 ones to perceive another dimension which is the so-called hell or the gehanim the gehanim verse 7 says for every kind of beast notice how it's using these basic examples of the animals it's like the infancy of humanity how they also use this in the hieroglyphs as well and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. It says, Yarawitina, Ya Wafocha, Yetena Kesak Ashochina, and Be Bahir Yale, Yefit Areta Waganuhulu, Beso Yigaral, Degmo, Tagar Toal. But the tongue, it says, but the tongue can no man tame. No man who is moving from the so called mortal side or the side that's under the curse, that the unborn, the unregenerated man it is speaking of here, where it says no man. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Negergin on debitin li gara manam soai chilim. Yemiya gadil mars 
የሞላበት ወላዋይ ክፋት ነው now it says right here now this is the advice also for the 2012 and preparing our as say hearts and minds our spirits you know, our spirits and our souls our psyches for this present time this chapter James chapter 3 is is a beautiful meditation you know saying to speak these words and to speak these words even out to to meditate these words because you meditate these words and speak these words you are gaining discipline over your mind in the template of Yeshua HaMoshi, in the template of God and Christ, of the King of Kings and His Christ. So this is how you really overcome the mind. Like, you're like I'm trying to discipline myself. I'm trying to do such and such. And they try this, but it often, it always fails because not done the right way. It's, it's His words that is an illumination, that is light, that allows all the faculties in us to focus. You understand? To focus on the, the 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 way the truth and the life everything else is a distraction but arsu getana abin in barkalen but arsu in the egziavi hera misale yet fet a rutina sawocha in a regmalen therewith bless we god buruku even the father even Abba Kedus, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of Elohim, Buruku. In other words, how is it that ones would bless, you see, that they talk about it's not the sinner, but it's the sin, but yet people say that, but still in their hearts and minds, they are hating the sinner and cursing the sinner instead of the sin. Think about it for a moment. Verse ten, it says, "Ka'and af barakatna margema yuat alu wanda moche hoy ye indi lihon aigeba." Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things ought not so to be. These things ought not so to be. Th- this is. This is really the key, really. This this is really the key. This is really the key. Because here the word is being spoken to, to the brethren. See that that's the key. It's not being spoken to the world. As Christ said, he didn't pray for the world. When he told us to turn the other cheek, he wasn't telling the world. He was telling us among the brethren. He says, You would tell who are my disciples by how much love they have one for another. And this is another reinforcing of that 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 second law or what's the greatest of all the command that second commandment love your brother as you love yourself or your neighbor as you love yourself minchis kaandas yemiyat asit na yemiya marina wukha ya menachalin Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Wonder moche hoy, O my brethren, bellesa wairana wais, woina bellesina litasara, titula lechin? Kutch o ham tafach o ha aiwata. Can the fig tree, my brethren? My beloved, bear olive berries, either a vine fix. So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. It's like what Christ taught, where Christ said either make the tree good and the fruit good, or the tree bad and the fruit bad. So, so this is to keep us out of the danger zone of double-mindedness, of double-mindedness, so that we can cross over, we can cross over this dark rift, this dark rift of, of humanity and human consciousness and this through this judgment time. Kanante Mtibanyana Astawai Mano Bemelka Mana Wawaru Sarawina Betbebe Yawahineta Yasai. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? 
Let him shew out of a good conversation, a good man of life, his works with meekness of wisdom. And this is what Nagus and Nagas, this is what Kedamawi Haile Selassie has in spirit and in truth showed us. That word right there is fitting for this man, for this perfect man in Christ and through Christ. Verse 14, Kuta Asara Arat Negergen Merara Kin Atna Ada Minyaneta Belabachu Abi Norbachu Atamaku Bau Netim Layatawashu. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. That means that you're not able to receive that glory of the regeneration, of the, the, the resurrection, of the resurrection body. If you have envy and strife in your hearts, that's what will prevent you from the crossover. And lie not against the truth. Don't lie against the truth. Admit you know what I'm saying? Admit. Now, here's where, here's where the rubber meets the road about the wisdom, the wisdom that, that's below, the, like the apophis wisdom or the wisdom that crawls on his belly, and the higher wisdom, similar to the, 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 uh, the, the solar disc, you know, with the wings, you know, the solar disc, the flying disc, you know what I'm saying, from ancient um, Egypt, or from ancient Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics, you might be familiar with it. Here it says in verse 15, Asra Miss, it says, Yehitibem kalayemi word idellem. This kind of wisdom does not descend from above. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Negrgin, ye midurno, ye shgamno, yaganintimno. It says, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Now, we know that, that wisdom, that wisdom, according to uh, symbolics from the ancients, is a serpent, is often depicted as a serpent. Now, here what we have in um, Wahibere, when we look at Wahibere right here, and look at this particular being right here, we have the... Um, we have the the apophis. This apophis is being perfectly described here in James chapter three, verse fifteen, where it says that this wisdom yihtibab kalai from above, yemi word idellem, does not descend from above. Negergin, but on the other hand, ye midurno, it, it crawls on its belly, has no wings, it lost its wings. Ye shigamno, it is of the flesh, is sensual, in other words. Ye aganintimno, and it's of the demoniacs. It is of the demoniacs. It's telling us right here, or in the King James, it says devil, devilish. Then it goes on to verse 16, where it says, in the atina. Adamanyaneta Balubet Sifra Bezia Hu Ketina Kufu Serahulu Aluna for where envying and strife is. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion. We could say for where envying and strife is, that that's Babylon. And every evil work, that's Babylon. You understand? The Kina Atina, the Adamanyaneta Balubet Sifra Bezia. Who ketna kufu sera hulu aluna? Now that's the that's the apophis. See, that's what this is symbolic of right here. That's the apophis. You understand? That's the apophis which is trying to sit on top and suppress the jet or the spine, the backbone of Osar and the backbone of so-called Christians and so-called righteous people, their backbone has been suppressed and being suppressed by this um, uh, uh, Leviathan, you know what I'm saying? By this Satan, Satanawi Leviathan, you know what I'm saying? In, in all of the forms, remember this 
this also breaks down in a tripartite form, the spiritual Leviathan, the psychological Leviathan, and then the physical Leviathan, which most people focus on in the form of the corporations. You understand? In the form of the corporations, that would be your physical um, Leviathans. And so 2012 and the whole connection with the Ophiuchus is this from Bob Marley's Wheel is Confrontation. This is what this alignment is coming to. It's a confrontation. You understand? When people, the first confrontation is where you confront of yourself. You have to overcome, get over yourself. That's probably the most difficult thing for people to get over, get over themselves and to submit to the way, the truth, and the life of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. That's probably the most difficult thing to do in spirit and in truth. Some can accept it out of he's black. So some black folks accept it. Some white folks reject it for that reason. But begin with the spirit, you understand, and his spirit, his word. And have his word shape your mind, your psychology, then the physical aspects will be will be easy. But verse seventeen now tells us about the other wisdom. The other wisdom. It says, uh taraki gar ishibai. Neheretina bego freya yamolabat, terterna gabizineta yale labat nut. But the wisdom, the tibeb, the hokma, the sophia that is from above is first pure, then it's peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. But the key is this. It names this wisdom the Lainyayitu. Lainyayitu. The wisdom from above. The heavenly wisdom. Uh, the heavenly wisdom. The celestial wisdom. The godly wisdom. And to conclude this chapter, 18 and 18, it says, uh, chapter 3, verse 18, but the Bamarinya first, it says, and then Milo, yet, Sidkim Frey, Salamina Lemiyadar Guta Soch, Besalam Yizaral. And the fruit, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace, of those who do peace. In other words, peace is not like a, a, a state. It's like when His Majesty spoke about um, um, it, it is a becoming, you know, it, it is a being. Peace is, uh, it says do, but not like you're making a product. It's not a product. It is a process. So when it says, yes, it came afraid. The fruit, there must be fruit to the Siddiq. Now, Siddiq and the Gibbet will, will be the Ma'at, righteousness, or the Fitta, the Pitta, the Fitta. You understand? The, the, the righteousness, that which is right and exact. Now, this is Siddiq is in relation, is right relation. You understand? With the true God, with your life, in the teaching and the principle of Yeshua HaMoshiach and with your fellow man and your brother man, or should I say your brother man and your fellow man, in other words. So we want just to we segued on this point about wisdom and the and the um the two types of wisdom where it talks about the devilish wisdom is is like a ground level, a earth bound wisdom. And then we have the heavenly wisdom, you understand, and how to decipher and discern the two based on their fruit. And that is in perfect alignment with the teaching of his majesty and the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Jesus Christ. Now, the reason why we wanted to point this out originally, and we haven't touched on just yet, okay, perhaps you can see this much better like right now, you can see the woman here in the in the um, 
in the tree. And let's bring this over so you can see this right here. You can see the woman in the tree right here. Now, the reason why we're pointing to this is because we say that this is the, the, the Caduceus Georgius in the heavens is Ophiuchus. But Ophiuchus is from the Greco-Roman, the Eurocentric uh, tradition, the Eurocentric and Asian Arab tradition, Indo-European. Let's just sum them up like that, from the Indo-European tradition. But then if we study this side by side right here, let us see if we can bring this down to size so we can show you this both side by side. If you look at this, right, and then if you look at this illumination, Ethiopic illumination of um, Caduce, uh, of Caduce Georgis, we can make this a little bit larger here, all right. And if you look at it side by side, this is now uh, from the so-called back view. Usually they show them from the front view, here from the back view. But now notice the key, the key elements, the key, the key points of the art. Notice this right here. You see this? They, they, they imagine this is the serpent right here, the head of the serpent. They imagine that the serpent is coiled around his waist like a belt. But then if you look at other pictures, it basically shows it in different, in different ways. When the European got wisdom or thought he got wisdom, he started to use his imagination in, in a lot of wild ways, and this is what he imagined. Now, what's interesting is that the ancients imagined something different. The ancients, the ancient Egyptians before him, they imagined something different. Now, right here we have from ancient Egypt, the very same um, Georgis or St. George, but here it is, here it is the um, so-called falcon god, you understand, or Cherui, or Horus, which is an Ethiopic word at its root, Cherui, and Cherui means the chosen. Cherui also means the elect the elect, the chosen. The Christians are also known, the true Christians, as the Cheruyan. So now when you look at this area right here, this remind me of this right here. And when you see the star patterns, you can really see, even with if you look at the stars right here, they interpret it that it's a snake. The point that we're trying to make is that they interpret that it's a snake. But when you really study when you really study the celestial, the celestial implications of the more true illumination, even with the body here and, and the link, remember how the psalm speaks about and you would tread on the, on the, on the scorpion and the adder and, and, and the different type of animals like this and they picture with the foot right there that this is the European version of this, of Caduceus Georgis, of St. George. And this... It's another example right here, the positioning, uh, the interpretive positioning. And now this, the St. George Rastafari 2012, is in the position of the alignment. Now when these factors come to their alignment, you understand the sun is also present, the four corners, this means that the cosmos, the galaxy is aligned. And if you understand symbolic, the circle is 360 degrees and the square here is 360 degrees. That means really it's two squares or it's two circles. Or you can see it as a circle and a square. You understand? And the change of position from the sun being behind the head here as with right here behind the head, the change of position to now the drama taking place right in front of the sun also puts it into a greater um, solar, you understand, a greater cosmic and a greater solar um, significance as well. So the so-called Ophiuchus of the European tradition is actually the Caduceus Georgis or St. George of the Ethiopic and the ancient Egyptian tradition or the elect, the Horus, as you see right here, here's the serpent body. Now, part of this is taken off, so we don't really know what is, was over here, you understand? But you can see certain significances in the action, though there's no horse here pictured in this. There is the wings, if you notice, there's the wings right here, 
If you look at this over here, the Kaduski organs from the Ethiopic, the Ethiopian church, there's wings right here. Some say this is the first thing that when you put these two together, that's the first thing that they notice. Or they may have noticed it before, but never thought about how interesting this is actually shaped like a wing. So whoever drew this, under whatever influence that they drew this, they drew this under a spiritual influence that actually pictures, even right here, is another example of the wing. Notice how this wing is closer to the, the ancient Egyptian. When you look at the ancient Egyptian model right here, let's bring this over. You can see the wing right here. You can see the wing right here, almost in the same position. This is at, at, a, at a, like a horizontal angle, while the next wing, the next wing is at a kind of an incline right there. And let's see on the Bob Marley confrontation album right there. Well, we don't see any particular wings right here, but this is in a whole different alignment. Remember, the it's in a reverse direction now. It's similar to how they give us some of the Ophiuchus images where they show Ophiuchus from a rear position, as in some of these images right here, where he has his back, his back to the, as though he's approaching matters from a different vantage point, as you see right here. But when you look at the positioning of the key elements, what you can also see in that, you can also see in that, that is the Ethiopian Kaduski Argus, or is St. George, except it being interpreted differently in the heavens. So this is the European interpretation, or the Western interpretation, and this is the African or the Ethiopian and the ancient Hebrew and Christian interpretation by contrast. So much more to come, my brothers and sisters. Stay tuned and uh, stay in tune and watch and pray and, and grow spiritually in the true faith of the King of Kings and his Christ. Shalom, Ras Tefari. And most of all, um, be prepared, spiritually prepare your hearts and your minds for this, for this sacred and this prophesied time to pass through this, this dark rift in spirit and in truth based on the true faith. Build up this most holy faith. So one love, my brothers and sisters. Shalom.